Hey, what's up? It's James. And teacher. We just want to tell you a few ways that you can support us. Financially. That's right. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash PTTP show. Inside the Patreon, you can find a few different packages. You got everything from like a dollar all the way up to $5,000. You know, like if you're business, you want to do some advertising, you want to be a guest on the show or something like that. But you know what? We appreciate any way you guys would like to support us. This is just another way of doing it. Or access the shop at lastrayart.gallery. Check out the shop as I'm a teacher's original artwork, some stickers, and also other merch coming at you from some of the guests on our show. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace. You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of Podcast episode one eighty four. What's going on, bro? One eighty four. Are you, you making? We're recording this, right? This is recording. Yeah, this is definitely recording. Yeah. What? Don't worry. This is definitely did, recording. Did you say something about my wife, dude? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's like. You know, I was thinking. I've got about- mixed emotions, dude. Yeah, yeah. I've got some mixed emotions. You know what I'm down. talking about, though, right? Of course, of course. Well, we're, we're ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about obviously the slap that was seen around the world, and you know, to be honest, it's like it was so much everywhere that um, it actually like bummed me out, and it, like it, I had to process, take some time to really like process how I felt about it. And That's, yeah, exactly. I, like I said, I had mixed emotions because here's the thing, dude. It started off with, I mean, from what I understood and what I saw, like Will Smith was laughing, you know, and and I don't know if it was kind of like tailing off the last joke and kind of starting with, you know, beginning to understand what he's saying this time. And then it seemed like he was kind of laughing at it for a minute, you know, or moment. And then, you know, he looked over and saw Jada's reaction and then went nuclear. He went for the nuclear option. We all know that look, though, right? You know, when your wife, like, uh, or your lady gives you that look, like, uh, oh, what the yeah. fuck are you I laughing know. about? <laughs> yeah, dude. My my humor is, is wide-ranging, whereas my wife's is, uh, she's from Germany, and, you know, she's very European, and Germans <clears throat> don't have as wide of a, um, you know, appreciation for humor, so I totally understand it, and I just, you know, I just have to be careful, that's all. But um, yeah, dude, uh, part of me kind of laughed a little bit because it was like, oh, my gosh, man, you know, I've, I've been this... in that situation, man. I mean, have you been in that situation where, like I said, your, your, your lady looks over at you kind of like, first of all, like, what the fuck are you laughing at? And then <laughs> second of all, like, I, you know, I'm a happy guy and I, I laugh easily, man, you know, so uh, like you get that crooked eye, you know, like from from your partner and then it's just like you yeah realize, then it's not okay and then you then you, realize you know what you're actually, gonna have- you know what um was very interesting was when he said um what denzel washington had just told him is that when you're at your highest that's when the devil comes to get you you know and when he said it he even did a, a great denzel washington impersonation did you see did you notice that well like when I- he said that he he was like oh man <laughs> his manners and everything all of a sudden he was denzel washington then it flashes over to denzel and denzel just sitting there looking at him like you know, I, I, just, I told you, motherfucker. Exactly. <laughs> That's a pretty good Denzel impression, man. Well, well, this is how this is how I really, really felt. I mean, I took some time to process it and I was just like, you know, honestly, like fucking theater kids, man. OK, like, <laughs> you know, and you're in high school, the theater kids like they sometimes they don't feel like they live in reality because they're Playing you know what they don't. I actually have a little bit of a, uh, an inside story. I know a lady who was um, one of uh, Will's agents, Will, one of Will Smith's agents, um, and I'm not going to say what her occupation is now. I don't want to give you know her identity away or anything. But um, she said the day she quit was the day that she was um, basically putting her life in danger, hauling ass up um, Mulholland to get to his place to take him a check. Or something 
Mm, 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 mm. And she realized, wait a second, I, this dude is so upset about getting this check. And I'm mean, here, I am hurrying up to get up there, risking my like life to do this. No, I'm not going to do this anymore. Well, well, I, I, I kind of just felt like I felt like and uh, just the take that I got from that lady. It was like, OK, yeah, I understand he's done some great things. And like he says, he's a work in progress. Um, but, dude, what would you do if you were the Academy? Like, I mean, well, I mean, I, I felt like I first of all, I felt like I, I wanted to say that I've actually been put in that situation before when your lady like kind of goes like, hey, are you going to do something about it? And first of all, it's like a fucked up, uh, it's like a fucked up situation to be in as a man, and especially in 2022 when you know we want to treat women equally and not have to make them fight, uh, their feel like you know we got to fight their battles for them and things like that. You know, you know what I mean. So hold on, I, I see our guests in the waiting room. We have one guest, and we, should we just let him in? Just, no, dude, we're not gonna uh, let any of these guys wait. These are legends, man. Both okay. these guys. Okay. Love so, them. All right, I'm going to... Uh... Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. Yes. Hey, welcome, Snyder. How you doing? What's up? Wow. We decided that you know what we're not going to let you wait in the living uh, the, in the waiting room, and then uh, uh, you know you're you're a little bit early, and we love that always. You, you know, uh, are you kidding me? Early? This is on time for me. <laughs> like you know, I love this man. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for joining us today, man. How you doing? Good, good, good seeing you. Oh, I love the art in the background. Oh man, always oh. good. Let, let, yeah, Thanks, let's bro. Talk, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, we uh, we led in with some, uh, you know, just uh, dealing, of course, with the slap heard around the world um, at the Academy Awards. But um, yeah, I uh, that's, uh, you know, Taylor uh, Hawkins there behind me, who unfortunately passed away uh, Friday last week. And um, I've actually steered away from doing so many people who pass away recently. But Dave Navarro is a very good friend of mine. And um, these guys were really, really close. And so Dave's kind of heartbroken right now. So um, this is Man. more kind of for Dave than it is really anything. And I think tomorrow we're going to uh, get together and we're going to do a, a piece. Um, I think Eddie Donaldson, well, Gorilla One, has a spot for us. So, um, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll be good for him. That's but awesome. so anyway, uh, that's, that's awesome, what man. that is. Um, what, yeah, dude. Can we what, get your take on uh, on what happened uh, Sunday night in our in the town <laughs> that you live nearby? You don't live in, but you live nearby. You, you, did you hear it? Were you outside? If you just if you were outside, you might have been able to hear it. Little slap. <laughs> oh man, you know I I rarely watch those shows, but I came in from the studio and family was watching it, or my you know my wife was watching it, so I sat down and. I actually watched the whole thing and I saw that slap happen live. And I was oh, like, wow, I was like, no way. This is staged. This, this is, this has to be staged. <laughs> and you know, uh, I see, I see creating the uh, waiting room. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and no, no. Yeah. Bring him in too. As soon as he All can, right. man. Let's look at this guy. He's even, I love it when guys are punctual, man. Oh, so hard to find. Oh, exact. Look at that on the dot. I know. That's what I'm saying, man. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. Welcome, Craig. You hear us okay, Craig? How you doing? Hey, what up? How you doing? Awesome. We can hear you. Uh, I'm going to... Okay ask you to start your camera as well too um, all right i'm trying to look for my cord real quick i gotta plug it in for my battery won't die oh no worries no worries we got time for you man but uh what, what, good to hear your voice man thanks for being with us today this is a, oh man thank y'all for having me this is an all-star cast man and uh you know uh i i've really been looking forward to this because whenever we've you know had create on and snyder on it's been such a pleasure man so uh you know while we look uh, for, uh while creates uh setting up his camera 
I'm going to go back to Snyder and say, uh, you know, we're talking about the uh, Oscars and Will Smith's uh, slap that was heard around the world. And so Brian, you thought it was it, at first it looked like it was maybe like some kind of a, a setup or something like that, like it was part of the show, maybe. For sure. It was just so bizarre. I, I thought there's no way Will Smith just got up, stormed the stage and slapped Chris Rock in the face. There's no way. And then <laughs> really hard, too. I mean, that was Chris took a hit. He's about, uh, what, 35 pounds lighter than than Will. And, y- you know, that was that was a, he, he put his body into it, sh- shoulder and everything. You know, that, was, that dude was the guy that started Muhammad Ali. Like he was Muhammad Ali in the movie. <laughs> right. Like, don't you know, like all that training and everything. Um, just, oh, man. That, that that was, that, I was just when I saw it, I was like, oh, my God, is it? what would have happened if he would have knocked him out and the dude would have fallen back, hit the back of his head at the, the right, at the wrong spot and died. Oh my God. Yeah. Luckily that's a different didn't situation, happen. right? I mean, that's, you that's know, insane. I, he, he definitely took that slap pretty well. I, I felt like, you, you know, and I, I think that since he took it so well, maybe that added to the fact that, at first, you thought it was staged, but did you hear him yell from the uh, the table um, on live on TV? I as think well everybody too? has. If they haven't seen it live, they've seen it on YouTube or online, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, do they show it live though? No, it was it was it was it was mute. <clears throat> okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Hey, there we go. There's create. Yeah, there he is. is. I'm trying to get this. Oh, that light coming from? Hold up. Uh, one of the doors ain't closed. Hold up. <laughs> He's in a stretch limo. Look at that. King Create is calling us from a stretch limo. Stretch Don't limo, you know? Man. <laughs> <laughs> got the stretch limo. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just out here handling business, making my runs right now, and and I'm still handling business, but right now, you know, I'm on, I'm on break mode for the interview. Up, nice. up until we do, then I'll be back on making my runs. Well, <clears throat> that's awesome, man. And uh, I'm uh, glad you mentioned that because in a minute, we're, that's one of the things I want to cover tonight is, um, you know, artists, how, uh, and actually Will Smith kind of helped bring this up, you know, how we're kind of taken advantage of and not paid right. And, you know, um, but we're going to, we're going to get to that eventually right now. We're just trying to debrief on the, the 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 slap heard around the world from the from the oscars and um <laughs> we've we've gotten um actually let's finish with you uh, if if, uh, if that's okay mr uh, mr snyder on, on your, your your thoughts and feelings about it just kind of you know moving forward what are you what are you uh, thinking Phew, man moving for you know i i, I felt i was sad it, it was it was a bummer because you know we knew that he had a chance winning the Oscar and, you know, we know that he did and man, it just, it sucks that like, this is what we're talking about because I, you know, I want to celebrate a good art performance, you know, his acting performance and it's, it's overshadowed, you know, we're artists. We like to celebrate creativity and talent and he has it. And we just talk about that slap, which man, it's still crazy. That's, you know, we're talking about it because it's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I really like both those guys. That's, That's not going to go away anytime soon. You it know? bummed me out I mean, because, like I said, I just really like both of those guys. And, uh, you know, it just made me feel like it bummed me out. Yeah, my hey. respect for, for Will Smith went, Err! and my respect for Chris Rock went, Whoop! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, as King, simple as. King Creek, can I we can get your uh, 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 thoughts and uh, uh, about the situation real quick, just brief, briefly before we move on to uh, the topic of the day? <laughs> um. Yeah, that, that was an interesting situation because I didn't know that 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 it happened until I got to where I was going that day. Uh, later on in the evening time, and somebody brought it to my attention. They said, hey, man, did you see Will Smith slap Chris Rock? I said, what you mean? Like, like slap him, slap him? <laughs> they said, yeah, man, they sl- he got slapped. They said, I'm going to show you the clip. So I, I thought maybe they was playing. So they played the clip for me. And when I saw it, I was like, man, that's that's pretty intense. That's pretty deep. You know, I say this, though. You know, people have to watch what they say because sometimes, yeah, we know comedians are comedians, but certain things are sensitive towards other people 
that may not think it's a joke, you know, and some people may not take it lightly and people handle things differently. Now, somebody else might might have laughed it off. The next person might have held the grudge and we don't say nothing at all. You I know, got a question Will- for you. What would you have done? What would you have done uh, if you were in Will Smith's situation? <laughs> because uh-huh. I got to admit, I might have gone up on stage, but then I would have gotten right up in his ear and I'd been like, keep your mouth, keep your name out of your mouth. Okay, mm-hmm. thank you. And then very quietly walked back down and sat back down, if anything, right? What do you think you yeah. might have done? That That's pretty tasteful. Uh, I'm not going to front. Sometimes it depends based upon the scenario, though. Um, I ain't going to lie. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to be like, man, I would have knocked him out. <laughs> I probably would have, you know, <laughs> told him what's up. Like after the award show, I probably exactly. would have stepped to him I- and told him, like, hey, man, like, let me let me talk to you for a minute. And, and I would have like told them now, even sometimes when we tell people things, they get in defense mode. Oh man, it was just a joke. I didn't mean nothing by that. And, and they try to use that to soften it down. But sometimes people just have to receive the, 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 uh, the, the comeback on it. They just need to be open and say, Hey, you know what? I apologize, man. I'm sorry. But see, the thing is some people say, I'm sorry, but they really don't mean it. They just do that just to brush the thing off so that they could just stay clear out the way. So, you know, but sometimes, man, it's mandatory to check a person verbally and let them know. Um, now, if they start getting a little bit ridiculous and start trying to retaliate verbally back, then, you know, everybody <laughs> got to take matters in their own hands and handle it uh, however they see fit for it, you know? I think, I think personally... It's easy to say what you would have liked to have done, but in that moment when the motions are hitting you, you know, who knows? We didn't ask you that, Brian. What, what do you think you would have done? Oh, man. <laughs> I like to use, I, I think I'd use my words more than my fist. So if, if, if I got the courage to go up on stage to confront him in front of millions of people, I think I would take the mic over and just put him in his spot, drop the mic, walk off. And that's like the extreme. I'd probably handle it more just after the fact. But Family, I mean, you don't mess with family. Emotions run hot when someone's targeting your family, especially with something that your family member can't help. You know, when, yeah. you, when you have a disease, it, whether you're a comedian or not, you don't touch that. It's something they can't help. But what, what, And what here's it, the thing. Here's why I think that Chris Rock took the, the hit and didn't press charges or anything like that is because he wasn't aware that, uh, that his wife was um, dealing with uh, pro- the, you know, the, what is alopecia i mean you know, teach, which... you're dealing with alopecia too you're t- you're 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 bald in the back of your head just just letting you know okay okay <laughs> but hold on hold on real quick you know the thing is like the the thing that everybody... but i'm a man dude and you know what i mean it's completely different well woman I, thing and men like... thing like i don't give a shit what i look like anymore you know i want to no, look sure scary. for sure but i want to keep thing... people away from me and my family <laughs> <laughs> one thing for sure though guys is that you know what? I mean, I'm kind of waiting for the city of Los Angeles to uh, press charges. because It's not really about Chris Rock, whether he wants to press charges or not. That's not how the legal system actually works. I've actually been in a really shitty situation where the person <laughs> that like uh, I was dealing with didn't press charges. But then the city of Pas- Pasadena, uh, you-, you know what I mean? Like, was pressing charges we'll on it. <laughs> like yeah exactly so i mean i like i'm really waiting to see how this plays out because from a legal perspective um like i said i i, I don't well, the think academy the last thing i saw was uh that the academy was taking action a disciplinary well, action they wasn't saying what exactly what it is yet but they are they are in the process of, of doing that yes yeah, so, though i mean i just don't like pre- preferential treatment because you're you know if somebody's a, a special uh, you know, in a special class or, or somebody like that, because that's not fair for everybody. And that, that you know, and then, like I said, I'm, I'm just waiting to see how this plays out from a legal perspective, since I've dealt with this uh, <laughs> type of situation before. But yeah, I've been on, there okay. for one of them that was similar to it. And I can understand, bro. It's like, let's just see how this plays out. So, all right. We, we had to address right when you it. think you're in the clears when the shit comes up on you. It's like, I thought that was done with. No. <laughs> We had to address it because everybody was talking about it. But basically, you know, today I wanted to um, we've been talking about this for a while. And what better day than Vincent Van Gogh's birthday 
than to basically have uh, Snyder and King Create come on and talk about a few of the classic uh, artists that inspire them, man. And uh, I think it's like- Dude, I will awesome. never forget the uh, the setup that, that Mr. Snyder did down in Carlsbad celebrating Van Gogh's birthday oh. um, years ago. When was that? When did you do that? Tell us about that. <laughs> Are you talking about when I dressed up as him? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I've, I've done a celebration every year for many years, but yeah. one. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Geez. Maybe five years ago or so, I, uh, I dressed up as him and, and went, I found a corner on the, on the 101 and Carl Thibault's drive and set up my easel and painted my site, the intersection that I was looking at as Van Gogh and, you know, some people don't know it's his birthday. I think most people don't know it's his birthday, but people recognized me. I mean, I kind of look like him. It's 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 crazy. And I I just I went for it and <laughs> people were stoked. They came up, they talked to me, and I, you know, gave them facts about Van Gogh and kind of played the part. And uh yeah, and I I I went to work <laughs> one year. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. I was just saying yeah. how much you look look like him. You, you, yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> oh, absolutely, dude. But it's it's weird because I, like, I'm a super passionate person, and I I you know I, I call Van Gogh overly passionate, and I I I I feel the same way about you know my interests. I just kind of go full charge and just go for it, and it definitely consumes my life. And I think most artists feel that way, and that definitely the artists that I connect with and stay in touch with you know you guys also you know we're all super overly passionate and that's what I love about Van Gogh so I mean obviously his art is amazing I love the texture I love the bright colors I love his story his writing his love for his brother and um but his passion man like I connect to that those type of people dude I love it man we're gonna go around just so we, we hear everybody's voice a little bit King Create can you tell us uh, you know, maybe somebody, uh, classical artist or anybody that, you know, kind of like, uh, outside of the graffiti and street art realm that maybe inspired you, uh, to, to start painting, you, you know? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Ernie Barnes is one, you know, yeah. his style was very influential, um, to me in the graph world, uh, Overton Lloyd who did the covers for Parliament back in the day for the funk mm. records. Hold on, we're going to pull uh, them up one, one, at, one at a time, okay? So uh, here, here we go. Check this one out. So this is uh, Ernie Barnes, and I've seen this, too. I've seen this uh, this piece right here. Um, check this Show out. it to us, damn it. Let me oh. see it. <laughs> Hold your horses. It's taking you so long, man. Come on. Hold your horses, all right? <laughs> but uh, man. This is a, a, a one of the pieces by Ernie Barnes. It's a teach. Go ahead and describe it for us, man. I'm I'm not going to describe it. Uh, the, the scene. This looks like the um, the illustration that he made for um, Good Times, which was a TV show uh, back in the '70s uh, and maybe part of the '80s. Um, but it's um, I would say uh, stylized um, and it's uh, ethnic people dancing and playing instruments in a, in a club setting. Um, and that's kind of, it's really small, dude. It has like this cliff background all around and everything. And the thing I'm looking at is actually like one inch by two inches. So it's really hard oh, for me sorry, to see sorry, the details, sorry, dude. Sorry. I'm old as it is. Fucker. Come on. You're fucking sorry. with me, aren't you? I'm going to make gotta, it really small and ask, teach you to make a, you know, I got a new, about it. I got a new monitor, <laughs> man. So, uh, but, but anyways, yeah, what really, I love, what I love about this piece uh, is that, you know, there's just so much movement and it's a still image, you know, inside this particular piece. Can you see it a little bit better now? That's a little bit better. Yeah. Yes. Thank okay. you. That is it. That is, that's from um, uh, yeah. King Create. Am I correct about that? Was that uh, featured on, on a TV show? Good times. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? That, that's correct. Yep. That's, that's where they feature that. I think either at the end or the beginning of the show. Uh, I, I think it might have been at the end, if I'm not mistaken, when the credit roll. I just remember it, man. I don't remember if it was beginning or, or end. I'm, I'm bad about stuff like that, <laughs> being dyslexic. So, <laughs> King Korea, what yeah. was the what was the other artist that you said did the Parliament um, uh, uh, cover? Overton Lloyd. Yeah, Overton, Overton Lloyd. Lloyd. Okay, let me pull that up. Overton now, Lloyd. what was your exposure to these guys, uh, to Ernie Barnes and Overton Lloyd's from like TV shows and uh, the album covers, basically? 
Correct. Yeah. Awesome. So Ernie Barnes, as an example, uh, you know, when I was a kid, my my dad and them would play those kind of records. Uh, you see, cause that 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 same picture that was on Good Time was on Marvin Gaye's album cover. That was the same record cover for Marvin Gaye. So when oh. my parents would listen to records back in those days, remember back in the seventies and in the eighties, a lot of the album cover was uh, was illustrated where the artists would draw a lot of the artwork on the covers for records, for movie posters, and so forth. And so that was my introduction to looking at his style. And then also on Good Times, when 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 the character JJ was uh, supposed to be painting, even though he wasn't painting, uh, a lot of those pictures that he was painting was done by Ernie Barnes on the TV show. Mm, so, so that was a good thing to be exposed to that. Uh, Overton Lloyd, now, as far as his stuff, you know, growing up, listening to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Parliament, George Clinton, and the, the funk music, you know, if you look at those characters, they had a lot of flavor and a lot of soul to them. The color oh, scheme. man, I like that. That's nice. Yeah, so that, that's where a lot of inspiration come from with the fresh characters, with, with that cool look, with the color schemes in them. So, so that yeah. was some of my introduction to uh, being exposed to uh, Overton Lloyd. Now, the good thing is I, I actually know Overton and, and he has a lot of respect for me and I have a lot of respect for him. But he, oh, he definitely is legend. I got a lot of respect for both of you now. Man, we, oh, would, thank you. we would love to talk to Overton sometime, man, with both of y'all on the podcast or, you know, if we can link yeah. that later, man, that'd be awesome. But, you know, it's, I, it's just so cool to, like, know that music I, connected you, you guys to the art that started to inspire and we all on this show we always talk about how you know i'm a dj and teaches an artist how these worlds always intersect and uh you know bring us uh, kind of in, and inspire us basically yeah i agree you know what even mark Baudet, von Baudet's son but you know chief wizard uh he was a great influence for me um man there's so many different people but i had the privilege and the honor to to meet Mark Baudet some years ago, back in 2011 in person. Then also the next following year, I think he came to LA, him and the gentleman who created the Ninja Turtles, uh, they was doing a mural up in Hollywood on the top of a comic book store. So uh, Mark Baudet actually invited me to come and kick it with them while they paint the uh, Ninja, Turtle, uh, Ninja Turtles mural on top of the comic book store in Hollywood. Dude, that's so awesome. That, that was a pleasure right there. That's nice. awesome, man. Now, uh, teach. I mean, uh, you know, your your turn, man. I, I love hearing about like these classical artists that ins, ins, inspire people, man. Or like, you know, where you you first started. Doing, um, getting you know what? I, if you look at my um, stencil style, um, I would say that that kind of comes from um, Gerhard Richter, because he did this um, series of of uh, I guess they were maybe. Um, I don't know if he used um, photo um, negatives and made prints and then somehow blurred them or something like that. Um, okay. And uh, it was just an interesting effect that he had. And uh, this guy has done all different kinds of styles, you know, from like out of focus, something like looks like a photo that's out of focus to um, just paintings, paint being smeared across a canvas or whatever. Um, to, you know, yeah, there you go. There's some of his pieces there. Is this um, what you're talking about? The photo negative, uh, being yeah, used? yeah. You see how this kind of blurred a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. so with my with my stencils, I if I'm doing a portrait of a person, I like to do the eyes like nice and 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 in focus and everything. And then when I get around to the outsides, I like to kind of blur it a little bit, so it gives it a little bit of motion. Um, kind of like his uh, some of his uh, pieces. Oh, there's a you see that guy right there. Is this one right here? Or oh, you're talking about this one right here there you go see oh, that's what I i'm see. talking about oh, i see it. um actually i see it in your your pieces how you have those little uh uh those little imperfections blurbs. you know yeah, the yeah, blurriness yeah, yeah. the it gives it life and, and, and motion instead of being such a static perfect figure so awesome, um man. and actually uh you know um van gogh and uh and rembrandt but van gogh i got to see um uh dis a display of his or a collection of his at the Bellagio in 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 uh, Las Vegas and that probably had the most impact on me because the the way it was lit um they had that special lighting that lights up only 
the uh, the inside of the of the frame of the piece. You know, it's like a light that has these these um, crop things on or whatever, and it only lights up the the painting. It's not not the frame, the wall, or anything like that. So, you know, if you know Van Gogh's work, you already know that the dude used a palette knife, and he didn't use the the paint is so thick and textured on the on the canvas that it just busts right off of it. So to be able to have that kind of lighting on it. Um, I'll just, I will never, ever forget those, uh, those images. Was this so the, the color in that this, was, this is the exhibit at the Bellagio, but I, I think, but, uh, it's super cool. You're right. It's, it is super bright, but, um, man, that's, it's so cool, man, because I, you know, we, we've been to amps traveled to Amsterdam as a show before and teachers put up, uh, uh, some stuff on the street. And, uh, you know, I've been to, uh, the Van Gogh museum out there, man. And it's just like, uh, it's so cool because Van, we, we talked about Van Gogh. Uh, on this uh, podcast many many times man and, and it's just so cool that somebody from uh you know 100 years ago can still be so uh prominent and uh relevant in today i think relevant yeah, yeah. i think like his uh mental health issues right are big <laughs> like uh t topic that like you know artists love to kind of come back and talk about too right and also we talked about how he cut off his ear uh and teach and why exactly yeah uh <laughs> snyder um what's the reason that he cut off his ear from from your point of view because i've heard multiple stories he, you know what i mean did he cut off his ear because like his gay lover didn't love him or like well, what, what, what's going on <laughs> uh, uh close actually uh, i don't think he was a gay lover but uh paul gogan was invited to live with him and uh you know, they had opposite personalities, complete opposite styles were, you know, not totally the same, but, you know, Vincent wanted to paint outside in the wind, wherever Gauguin wanted to paint inside, wanted to go look for ladies, you know, go kind of hit the town. They just, they just, you know, they weren't driving and uh, they got in a big fight. Uh, I think he was also like in and out of a relationship with a prostitute that was going sour. And I think you know, all that stuff just started twisting and and just erupted in in that that fit that that um episode. And you know, he he had those episodes too. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't sane. He you know he was disturbed mentally, and I think it just all kind of hit the fan at that moment. What his ear? I think he was probably just looking in the mirror and just saw his ear. I mean, who knows? There's a lot of <laughs> mystery. There's, there's a lot of everyone has their own kind of story you know why or how he killed himself why or how he cut off his ear I, mean, I, think, I think at the end of the day he was just he had a mental breakdown yeah you know i like heard... i like your understanding of it the most out of anything that i've heard really um <laughs> because who knows exactly what the fuck was going on sorry guys i'm you know? spreading rumors about uh you know you know, <laughs> you know van gogh after the fact having a gay lover actually but... <laughs> well no because i've heard that as well i have heard that as well that um you know van gogh had was you know kind of uh bisexual if you will and he had feelings for um for gogan and but gogan did not feel the same and so when he left him um, in one of his uh, fits that, uh, that Snyder was talking about, which I've, I've heard about as well, um, you know, uh, it just went a little bit overboard, you know, yeah. uh, and, you know, things happen, man, you know, it yeah. may have been a palette knife, it may have been a fucking palette knife that he did it with. That's what I'm thinking, because uh, that, that's, that's usually what he what he used instead of a paintbrush so much he used a palette knife to, to put down chunks of paint. Hmm. So I'm thinking he, you know, just like Brian said, it, it could have happened just in a fit of rage. It's like a, he pulled a Will Smith on himself. You know, who knows? Um, <laughs> Can I ask you guys? Okay, so everybody knows about uh, this famous Starry Night painting, right? One of the rumors that I've always heard is that out of his insane asylum, this was the view of the window. And then this is somebody's uh, hair falling as they're jumping from a, higher roof like have you have you ever heard that before uh guys you know so it's like it looks like a beautiful starry night and then there's this like kind of like tree trunk thing on the left but uh if you look at it it kind of does look like somebody's hair like if they were like jumping oh, it very out. well could be yeah you, you know what i mean so i, I mean w w let's ask the uh, you know van gogh expert. snyder i want to hear from snyder, snyder. yeah, yeah, yeah like, like <laughs> i want to hear about that <laughs> well man i'm 
I'm no expert, but I love reading about his life and and hearing these type of things. I've never heard that one before. Oh, really? But, but I like it. <laughs> I haven't either. I like have not either, but now that you say it, I can't see it any other way. You see it? Yeah, yeah, because basically, <laughs> King Cray, I, do, do you see it? Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, you see this is the, like the hair flowing, and then this is the, the, the if it was a window, and so it's just like, I've always seen it as like a castle or some some type of thing, but if you really yeah, look exactly. at it. I thought it was some kind of a, a stylized castle up on a hill or something like that. Yeah, but if you really look at it, I mean, it really does look like somebody's hair, right? Would you say so? <laughs> I, I, I see it. It, look like that here, it, it, it do look like a little, like a little, little, uh, uh, little castle or something, and they look like a stylized, like little cloud going into the distance as it flows into the atmosphere. It, it's a, it's a pretty interesting painting. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I remember when I was in school when I was young. And I was in art class. The teacher would show us these type of paintings and she would have us reduplicate them and teach us about certain type of uh, creative art and artistic styles, like with brush strokes, uh, you know, like impression, we call it the impressionist style of painting or like Matisse with the fauve style of painting. So it was, it was interesting as me as a young person growing up, being exposed to all the different uh, artistic painting styles but like I told a lot of my teachers and stuff man I told them that that's cool but I told them that there was the people that I looked up to personally to me that was like creative heroes for me that really when I would look at their work they would turn that switch on on the inside of me and activate my creativeness Tell, tell, nice. us some more, tell us some more of those, I love that uh, man let them know about it you know what that's cool and everything but this over here, this kind of work is what makes me excited. Just so you know, you may want to show this type of work to some others as well, instead of just this. And I love that yeah. how you said you talked about brush strokes and it's kind of like just basics and the, the, the basics of like the foundation of what makes a good painting and have you duplicate those. You know, I love that. And I think you had a good teacher in showing that. I don't even know if like many school districts have like an art program anymore <laughs> right what would you say you know a lot of them uh, don't anymore i tell you that a lot of them don't but out, out right. of carlsbad i know that they do for for sure so uh <laughs> it's it's awesome it's awesome to see out there basically yeah. um hey can you know you what can i uh go ahead. i'm sorry go ahead no i was gonna say what what other um do you have any other names we can we can uh, tell the audience that we can look up. Uh, you know, you had Overton Lloyd earlier. We had Ernie Barnes. Uh, any any other ones that pop up into mind? Who, who we said we said Mark Boday. Uh, what's oh, the Mark Boday. I let me let me try to like. Uh, While he's looking for that, I'd like to to get into um, you know, uh, kind of the subject of of you know doing business, and like you said, you're on your way to go do some business right now. Um, recently, I had a, a client get in touch with me. And uh, it was a DM on Instagram and it was, you know, they're like uh, paid work, you know, it's some paid work. So I'm like, okay, some paid work, you know, let me check this out. And That's they right. had a, uh, um, uh, it was a, a studio. I don't want to say what exactly what kind of studio. I don't want to give away too much information, but, um, and it has, you know, two like 10 foot high by 20 foot long walls on each side that they wanted to have, you know, done up. And um, so my first question, you know, I've said, hey, you know, nice to meet you. This and the other, we got this room. I'm like, okay, well, you know, what's what's the budget on this? What do you guys want yeah. to spend on this? You know, well, you know, we hadn't really uh, discussed that exactly, you know. And I'm like, well, okay, um, let me know when you do, and uh, you know, we can go from there. You know, I'm like, because I don't want to, you know, I could do something simple, or I can fill the the walls. You know what I mean? So. Um, it's going to be depending on, on, on what you have to spend, you know, so I don't want to overshoot anything right now. When you figure out what the, the, the budget is, you get back in touch with me and let me know. And what it was, was the dude was fishing for like, it was, it was Ooh. somewhere where some, you know, celebrities and people go to use. Okay. And he was trying to talk it up. Like, you know, you're going to get some good exposure here and shit like this, you know? Oh, hell no. I hate that. Like, word. like, Oh dude, just let me just do these walls for you, man. And, and then we'll work something out. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, nope. That's just, that's not how it works. And then, you know, as soon as I was like, you know, I didn't want to discuss anything else. I was like, well, you know, when you get the budget figured out, I tell you what, you know what, 
when you talk to your guy and you guys get the get the budget figured out, you get let me know and we'll go from there. Yeah. Never heard back from him, of course. Hmm. Um so <laughs> you know, I it, it hurts me because it's well, one of the hardest things to do, be an artist. I, th- I think I think one thing is also um it, it's just like, you know, if it's just some random DM and then they're asking for <laughs> free stuff like you know it's like i haven't even met you like you know what i mean and it's like uh a lot of times i mean you know amongst artists collaborations are they're free a lot of times because it's like a fellow artist you, you know or it's like well, if, if you whatever if you're gonna start in on something say look here's the deal this is not a paid gig okay this is you're, you're gonna be doing this because it's gonna be at this location you know, you might get some good exposure here. Oh, you're right. He did say it's, it was a paid gig at the beginning, right? That's Just what I'm pay, saying, dude. He started yeah. off with this is this is some paid work right here. You know, so Snyder, <laughs> tell me, how do you keep yourself from getting in that predicament? <laughs> you know, you, I back clients clients into the corner. They they approach me and boom, creative brief, questions, questions, questions to the point where they're like, okay, I want to work with this guy, or you know, they'll just fall off. Yeah, it's like I'm not. I, I'm big on the creative brief because people will approach you. They have no idea what they want. Sometimes you have to convince them they want nothing, which means they're not going <laughs> to waste your time anymore. And that's that's a win in my book. It's like if I can not waste oh, yeah. my time and tell oh my you, God, yeah. you don't need something, then yeah. we're good. Yeah, absolutely. I so agree with you, man. <laughs> can create. Like, I know what you need to do is you need to put an ad in this little situation over here where someone's going to come and going to do it for you for free. Okay. That's what you need to do, all right? That's going to be your best situation because if that, you want what I can do for you, you need to, like, get on the PayPal and put something in my account before we go any further. Mr. Act- Create, can you give us some wisdom, please? Wow. I, I bear witness to those testimonies because I have that kind of stuff happen before. Now, the thing is, is how we deal with them when they come along and also letting people know that we have value because for some reason, a lot of time. People think because we artists, we just want to, hey, give us a give us a surface and we'll be down to come and paint anything. And we just so happy like a little kid get candy or something. But once again, we we paid our dues as grown-ups from whatever age we started to now. Uh, and speaking for myself, you know, I'm like, man, uh, if I choose to do something on the strength, then that'll be on me. But I got a whole lot of limitations on that because if I am doing something and there's no type of money involved per se, then, you know, it just depends on what the occasion is. And then, like I say, I got my own stipulations to what I'm going to do. Uh, they can't really have no say so on nothing, but, but I try not to go that route because time is money and money is time. And I value my time and also my expertise skills of what I'm bringing to the table, because I know that when people look at the artwork, they're going to be attracted to it and it's going to do something for the people. And so, you know, that's, that's one way I look at it, but let me give y'all a quick testimony. Uh, I went, uh, actually I got a phone call. This was years ago. And this guy told me to create these people need a, uh, some artwork done in their business facility. They have a real nice uh, 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 business in this, you know, high rise building in West LA. I said, sure, what's their budget? He said, I think they only willing to pay 200. I was like, whoo, so I don't know about that. So he said, well, go call them and just set up an appointment and go meet with them. So I set up the appointment. I, I did a real good presentation, showed them my stuff on the computer. They was really blown away by my presentation. So next thing you know, I said, well, let's go take a look at the wall that you guys looking to get done. So they showed me the wall. And when they showed me the wall, the wall wasn't small, but it wasn't real big, but it was a nice, decent size. So to make a long story short, they was like, uh, yeah, this is the wall we want painted. Now, mind you, throughout that meeting, they haven't discussed the budget yet or anything. They were like, yeah, we just want this painted. So I said, well, same thing like you said, uh, Teach. I said, so what's your budget? They said, well, we didn't really, you know, think about it, but we was thinking 200. I said, well, this is a pretty big wall. I said, you guys got to think. I'd have to purchase materials. 
which is separate. Then I need money for my labor, which is another fee. They said, okay, we understand. I said, well, I was getting paid that kind of money when I was very young, like 14 years old. And I was going from door to door in my local area trying to figure out how, how does the business work? I said, but now that I have a lot of experience and years under my belt, I say that my level of pay is very different. So I, I ended up telling them what it would cost. They looked at each other and they was like, wow, you definitely worth it. That we don't have that kind of money. I said, well, I tell you what, make me an offer that would make me happy, but at the same time, we both happy so that nobody feel like they getting um, used. So they, they came over with a real nice offer that was close to the amount. And I went ahead and went for it and I did the job. Now my Love point that. to this scenario is this, this is for all the viewers that's watching this video. My point is as artists, we have to know our value, our work and what we bring to the table. We can't let nobody else dictate, dictate that to us. We got to make for sure that they understand that who we are. So within our presentations, within our bios, within them looking at our social media pages or websites, they have to know and understand that they came to us looking for a professional job. Now here's the downside to it. Sometimes they can't afford us. So they'll go get an amateur and they get amateur results. And when they get those amateur results, they like, damn, I didn't waste a little bit of more money, you know, because they didn't <laughs> see the difference. They're like, oh, that's that's not the that's not the job I wanted. You know, yeah. that's actually one of the things I tell people as well. I say, you know what? Um, you want me to come down off my price. You want me to give you a discount. Right. Is what you're asking. Basically, you want a discount. But when I'm working on that piece, do you want me to give it my full effort or my discounted effort? <laughs> uh, I like that. Good point. So True. I try to, re I've used that before, you know, and, and some of these rich, rich motherfuckers, uh, millionaires, billionaires, they, you know, that sometimes you use that on them like, okay, I understand now I get it. You know, it's like, they don't, they don't even think of it until you make them understand it like that. But then there once you, you do, they're like, oh, I get it now. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I want you to give it your full effort. I'm like, well, then you need to pay the full price. <laughs> Don't I rob me. This. Check this one out. And in the process of telling them that, I'm, I, I, I always remain real calm because yes. I want yes. to see that. So I, I try yes. not to get emotional and put all my emotion into it because then, you know, they're going to be like, oh, look, we, we got them all emotional. So I stay calm because... That's showing them I got confidence. And if I do need to walk away from the situation, they might say, damn, I guess this ain't no big deal to him. Like, like maybe we yeah. should try to beat him at some kind of level. See? That's another thing, dude, that what uh, uh, Oppenheimer, Hal Oppenheimer, one of the top world's uh, investment bankers, one of the things he told me is what you just said. Never, ever, ever enter into a deal that you're not willing to just walk right the fuck away from. Yep. Good, yeah. good information right there, man, because you will get robbed. Speaking of yeah. uh, just a little sidebar, robbed, uh -huh. I keep saying robbed. Just this past Saturday, someone broke into my truck in our front yard here. Uh. And I live in like a, you know, kind of a nice little neighborhood. And, you know, they, they went through everything, was all pulled out and everything. And I'm, and I'm looking, I'm like, well, they, they didn't take anything. And so oh. I went and I told my wife and my wife laughed at me. You know, she goes, oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean you're sorry? Like, you didn't have anything worth taking type of sorry? Like, no, I, that means I succeeded. I've succeeded in, in not putting anything in my truck that, that was, but then I found out the next day, luckily, I was helping a friend of mine move. And luckily, he had a friend that was helping him as well that knew a little bit about this situation I'm fixing to tell you about, which was, I went to get some gloves out of my truck and just look in the glove box right quick and realize what, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? My truck manual, truck registration, insurance cards, um, receipts for work I had done on the truck were gone. <clears throat> so I walked over to my friend. I'm like, dude, the most bizarre thing happened. Like my truck got broken into yesterday. I didn't think they took anything, but I just realized and this guy's like, oh, dude, okay. I've heard of this before. 
be very careful with your truck. You need to, it's about to get stolen. Someone's about to try to steal your truck because what they do is they'll get the registration, they'll switch it over to them and then they'll just come get your truck and then nothing you can do. So little FYI for you folks out there, this is one of the things I've been dealing with these past couple of days while the, the slap heard around the world is going on. I, I almost got slapped, but uh, so yeah, I, I parked my truck like sideways and, and my wife pulled in behind it. Um, and so I'm just, I'm kind of like on a little bit of a defensive mode right now, but um, so yeah, I'm sorry, little little sidebar that's that, uh, <laughs> speaking of getting robbed, but uh, yeah, artists, man, stick up for yourselves. Don't, don't, uh, you know, don't let people um, bully you, you know? And, and you know what? Those people that do try to bully artists, you're like one of the worst type of people in the world, you know? Yep. I mean, come true. on, artists, it's a, you don't ever get to retire from being an artist. It's hard. Don't, and it, don't you know fuck those, us up. You and know? those people, they, they need to be told that they can't mess with artists. And I, you know, I empower artists to speak to, up to speak up and you know one time i had someone trying to mess with me and i think he thought that i was just an artist i would just say all right i'll, I'll move on no way dude i took that guy to small claims and i went judge judy on him and <laughs> presented a case and fought and won and awesome. got him to pay me got my rights back to the to my art and i you know i, I think it went that far because he thought i was bluffing he thought that i wasn't gonna learn the whole system and and present a case and do it right and and you know i i you didn't know mr snyder is no. a little bit more together with it than most artists and i you know he's <laughs> got like, his shit together i've been and there that, done the same thing dude small claims court won the yeah. case and everything a lot of artists do it and i feel like you know i want all artists to do that and i think once yes. everyone all all of us come together and like show people what's up they'll st hopefully they'll stop treating us a certain way not and it's not that everyone treats us bad, but you know that we've all had those clients where you're just like, how what were you thinking? And that's why when I say backing people into a corner, it's like, all right, I'm gonna ask you every question. I'm gonna get go through every scenario to the point where you realize you don't have enough money to buy this giant piece of artwork or to paint this four story. You just scale building. back your expectations a little bit. Just scale it back. You know, if this is what you got to offer you ain't going to get this, you know what I mean? You're going to get this in return. You know, it's like this, that's how it should be. You know, it's a crazy business. That's for sure. I mean, you know, artists are brave, man. And honestly, one of the things I always feel like it's, uh, especially with visual artists, <clears throat> I don't know why they always feel like, or a lot of artists feel like we have to attach a cause to an art event or, or something like that. When sometimes yeah, it can just be like, before. Hey, come out yeah. and, support me as an artist man like you know what i mean like why is it that we gotta link it to some charity it's like you know the artists actually you know it's it, it's hard to do we feel bad if we don't you know if we're just doing it for ourselves we feel like we got to benefit something else you know to make people want to come and do it you know how pitiful is that shit you know that's ridiculous what do you guys think about that I, I just think it's like funny and i think that we should be more you know just like uh it, it is tough because we want make people to make it feel like it's like double whammy good cause and you're supporting me right <laughs> you know yeah i mean a lot of the stuff i do it's it's for a good cause and it's usually to create culture within my community like the people i love and the businesses and organizations so you know it's there's always like this double deeper level with my stuff but you know mm, i don't call point. myself a visual artist i call myself a community artist so that's just it goes hand in hand with what i do uh, yeah and those uh, people uh, of you who don't know who brian snyder is please check out his social check out everything that he does down there in carlsbad and try to mirror it in your fucking community because it's <laughs> awesome thanks teach great what were you were you gonna uh and you know what i'm sorry just right quick what is what's the best way for people to check your stuff out brian Oh man, I'm all over the place, but Instagram, I keep that the most uh, updated. It's just Snyder Art. Snyder, S N Y D E R Art. Yep. You know, one of the things that also brings you guys all together um, is that uh, Snyder uh, curates a wall down in Carlsbad that both Teach and Create have uh, painted. And um, it's so cool to, you know, just bring different communities together and uh, senior yeah, l grubbies yeah. uh is it still uh senior l grubbies senior grubbies yeah it, the carl's bad art best food 
the best food, the best drinks. They treat you like a king when you're there doing the wall, man. It they is do. awesome. One of my you know. most favorite things to do. And also the cool thing is that, you know, you've had a lot of different artists come in um, just ever since we've last done uh, our previous podcast. If you want to go back and check out, uh, you know, King Create talking about painting the Car Carlsbad wall, just go back and check out that episode. Also, uh, you know, we've gone down and had Snyder on the show when, uh, you know, we were in Oceanside. Uh, there's a lot of cool art in just down in San Diego. You know, make it a day trip. It's something awesome I I've done and definitely enjoyed doing. So, uh, um, but, but yeah, anyways, uh, King Create, I just wanted to ask you, um, y you know, were you any of the similar type of situations? I mean, like, um, yourself, um, in regards to, see, I got yeah. lost a little bit cause I know we bounced around Yeah, like yeah, yeah. When, when you asked that question, what, what is it pertaining to? Oh, just no, I like, think you know, he, I think he gave some very good advice on on you know how to to approach the the client when they're you know trying to get uh, you know more than than what they're willing to right. pay for. Um, oh yeah. But uh, moving forward though, um, if you if you're a young artist um, coming into the business, like oh. to set their rate, like if you if you were giving a, an artist uh, advice on like about how much to charge, um, you well, know, do you break it down by hour and like a about how much an hour should an artist that's like, you know, that's pretty good. You know, it's got like a decent style uh, on the uh -huh. streets and everything and has had some off offers, you know, for his work and is wondering, okay, like, where do I start? You know what I mean? Well, for me personally, I don't work by the hour. I work by the, the, the style of the job uh, based upon the complexity of it, how large it is, what kind of surface I'm working on. Because if I charge by the hour, then I could take my time and go slow <laughs> and I could come up, but I don't want to do it like that. I like to be fair to myself, and fair to the client. My advice to a lot of the young up and coming artists is two things. Number one, try not to play yourself for spray paint. Cause a lot of times these days, and I've done it when I was young, I'm not going to lie. When we was real young and we was just happy to get spray paint. That, I guess that was around the time when we, we probably had a comfort zone to live at home with our parents and we didn't have to worry about expenses because everything was taken care of for us. So spray paint was the only thing that mattered back then to us. So if uh, somebody saw us on the street, say, hey, can y'all paint this for this and that? We might say, sure. They said, what y'all need? Oh, we need some paint. And they'll go buy us all the paint we want. That, that was cool. But as we get older and we got responsibilities, it's very important to once again go back to knowing your value and your worth of who you are. So I want to advise young people that start understanding who you are and the value. Now, here's a thin line. We have people that's our age that to this day, they'll play themselves for a big piece of artwork for like a couple of hundreds of bucks, maybe $200. And I'm like, man, what kind of stuff is this? It, it it does a lot of the service to people like us who paid the way to where somebody might say, oh, man, I could get this dude to do that for like $200. And we might charge like $2,000 and up. Now, here's the crazy part. I want y'all viewers that's watching this to pay close attention. As artists, we have to be careful of letting people come to us at the last minute and say, hey, I need artwork done. I said, well, when, like, what do you need? I said, I need this big, huge wall done. I need it done. What's today? Today is like, what, Wednesday? They might say, I need it done by Friday or by tomorrow. I'm like, man, hold up. <laughs> Number one, I got to do a layout to make for sure you approve of it so that we on the same page. That's one. Number two, we got to, you know, first, we got to look at the budget. Then number two, we got to do the layout. Number three, we got to go get the materials or I got to go get the materials with the budget set aside for that. And then you got to ask for a deposit to secure your time up front. And then when you're done upon completion of the job, make for sure they sign an agreement or they agree to paying you at the very end the remaining balance. So that way you secure yourself and what you're doing. And if something did go wrong, hey, at least you got you know That's something <laughs> hey, 50%, fun. i always ask for at least 50 percent up front 50 percent deposit 
There you well, go. I'm what, in what agreement. A, what about like uh, David Cho? How you know they gave him Facebook stock and they didn't give him any any, any money, right? Hey, it, you know what? <laughs> However, you deal with stuff is your own circus. It's your own monkey, your own circus. You know, if, if you got some different things that are being offered, like, dude, I mean, I'm sure there's some social, you know, um, uh, people who uh, all they got to do is put your work up and say, hey, I love so and so's work, and all of a sudden you got like an extra hundred, couple hundred thousand followers. You know, some yeah. of which are interested in artwork. You know what I mean? Something like yeah. that. You're like, okay, sure, I'll I'll trade you a a piece of artwork for a fucking shout out. You know what I mean? Cool. So sometimes it's worth that in itself. But if that person giving you that shout out, man, they got to have some serious fucking followers. <laughs> and you you know, <laughs> even still, then sometimes you still don't get anything from it other than some extra followers who sometimes turn out to be assholes. And you know, like you catch them giving you shit on something else, and you're like, you know. <laughs> Block, 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 block. You know, I don't even want one of these new fucking followers, man. I want some quality followers. I don't want these motherfuckers to be like, man, what's this whack ass shit you're doing over here? You know, it's like, uh, I didn't get any extra business from this. I got just some extra pains in the asses, you know? <laughs> oh yeah king korea what what can we expect from you in the coming months man what and uh you know I, obviously you're out there painting murals uh working on stuff but uh you know anything coming up for you uh well here's something i just did over the weekend on saturday uh you know ice t have the, the event called the art of rap and uh i was on stage doing live painting for the audience um, that was a good turnout because a lot of time when we look at hip hop, <laughs> people keep looking at hip hop as just rap music and they call the event, the art of rap. So I, you know, I asked one of, uh, the, the yeah. one okay, of that's the what movies. I thought he said, ice tea. Of course there was a good fucking turnout. Holy shit, man. You fucking kidding me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I had awesome, to man. It. And it was, it was, it was interesting because like the people, all they was ready to see was all the rap but in the DJ and then here I come on stage with my easel in the canvas, like at a certain percent done. And then while the music and the MCs was on stage rapping, I was up there doing my thing. And it, I had a lovely time because it gave people a chance to witness what it was like. And so I enjoy doing that with people like ice and uh, the final level entertainment group, uh, KRS one mad lion, Man, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't nice. just. I've been on stage with Cool Keith, you know what I'm saying, and Dennis Death doing some artwork for them, and, and it's a good feeling, man, to be up there in front of the audience and showing them the art side of the hip hop culture. But, but I shared that because I just wanted people to know. But as far as some things that's coming up for me, I'm always staying busy, man. Whether I'm painting the wall, doing a lecture, uh, doing workshops with people. You know, I'm always staying busy, so what's I the, do have the best, a lot of What's the best way for people to get in touch with you? All right, so for all you viewers that's watching this right now, one of the best ways to reach me and to request artwork is on Instagram. So here's my Instagram handle, K-I-N-G, King, underscore, C-R-E, with the number eight, King, underscore, create. That's how you can find me on there. Yes, that's indeed. A, nice. That's awesome, man. For those of you who are watching, you can just check the screen. We just popped it up there, and we're going to have it all over the uh, the post for it and everything. But, um, dude, thank you so much for, for being with us today, man. Um, oh, I definitely. just watched it go from, from daylight to dark in your car, in your stretch limo. Uh, and, dude, I, I really appreciate your time. And, dude, your knowledge, your, your information – and your stories, man, just this is all gold from you and, and my brother Snyder here, man. Can we hook you guys up um, with any when, any paint? When, uh, King Korea, we, we hooked you up last time when you we did our last episode with some ghost spray paint, right? The black? Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, yes, maybe, I think we just had some samples of that. Snyder, did you get some of the ghost spray paint? No, hook me up. I haven't had any. Okay, next time. Oh, or, we'll uh, hook you up. That's for next, sure. Next time I'm on my way to uh, San Diego for something, man, because I, I do go out there every. Or me, because I got some uh, I got some boxes as well. <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm gonna uh, you know, you know, we're we're gonna go ahead and uh, give them out to you, man. So uh, you know, sorry for for uh, keeping you guys waiting, man. But I can create, man. If you need any more ghost spray paint, we definitely would uh, hook you up, man. So uh, 
uh, you, you know, it'd be awesome to like do a little promo with you or something, man. So. Yeah, that, that's what I was about to tell you. Uh, I have a wall space. If you guys wanted to come and film me, we could use it as promo and I could I could use the paint and do a piece with it and let people see what's up. That would be something real cool. So you guys tell me when you're ready. Let's check the schedules and, and whoever's going to film, get ready and we'll put a nice, cool instrumental uh, track to the uh, to the visuals. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll write a I'll write a hip hop lo fi beat or something, man. It it'll be cool, man. That that'll be awesome, man. Um, oh, and uh, dude, like I said, we gotta have you guys back in the studio. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, COVID still, you know, it's almost over, guys. So, uh, you know, once everything's like <laughs> back to normal, uh, you you know, we'll be back in the studio and traveling again, and definitely come down and visit you, Snyder, and uh, have you back in the studio, King Create. All right. Oh, real quick, dude. Uh, Snyder, we, we got to tell them about the, the latest production we all did as a collaboration Ooh. down there in, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying, at the wall. Man, we, we we did a real nice, good uh production in Carlsbad where different artists came and did a panel in a diagonal format, which was something totally different. And I wanted this to be a part of that time. so bad, but dude, my, my yeah. the past couple of months for me have been... The wife trying to edit the film and getting all kinds of notes from everybody, last minute meetings and everything. So um, my ability to make any kind of, uh, you know, th th that hurt to not be able to come and, and participate with that as well. Uh, Brian, thank you for the uh, invite, though, as well. I just wanted to say oh, yeah. that. But yeah, dude, King Create, continue telling me about that, please. Oh, yeah. So, so man, that, that was a good turnout. Um, I appreciate that, that Snyder reached out to me. You know, I, I definitely value the the fact of me and him connecting and to being able, like the first time when I went to Senior Grubbies, I, mean, I had a lovely time. I blasted the wall. Telling out. you, man. That was good. Even on the second go round, I went down there and, and he gave me the, the diagonal section for that day. And I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to do my normal uh thing that people would expect every time i paint as an artist i like to always come with some new different flavors and but i always put 100 nice. of to it because i like people to really uh value it now here's the other part there's people who's been taking photos because i put my information at the bottom um uh, and they've been sending me pictures of the little kids in front of my artwork uh, there's the hair shop in the back where ladies, they get their hair done, they go take pictures in front of my work. And man, it's so beautiful to be able to receive those photos and look and see how yeah. people yeah. get a kick out of it. Yeah, it touches my heart. That's awesome, man. And you had some awesome, you know, happens. artists, Snyder. Like, you know, I saw you had Annie Priest down there. We saw, you know, she's she's pregnant, having a baby. Shout out to her, man. That's awesome, man. Like, uh, so keep on doing what, what you're doing, Snyder. It's awesome what you're doing down there. And we, we hope to see you in person uh in the studio look soon. forward to, the, to all the projects you got coming up and seeing what you got going on next man i always love seeing it man i well, love, my, my, love your efforts thank you guys my 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 newest project is is a, a trip i'm a i'm i'm teaching full time at a carlsbad middle school now and i'm i'm gonna start hitting up everyone i want everyone to come into the classroom and expose these kids to all the talents and the passions of all my buddies all you guys so You'll be getting an, uh, an email soon or a call soon. And That's awesome. Snyder is now a teacher, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm down with a name yeah, like mine. Ready. I got to live up to my shit, right? It, it's it's the best thing ever. I see 150 kids. I have four periods of art, everything from sixth grade to advanced eighth grade. I'm taking a, a, uh, 30 kids on a field trip to a museum, to a glass blowing place, and walking Amazing. the building for two hours all in one day. Like it, it's, it's the raddest thing. I'm loving it. Oh awesome. my god, dude! I would tag them. I'd get their ears, and I'd like tag them, tag them all. You know yeah. what I mean? So you got like some kind of make them take a tablet, so you can like uh, some kind of embed like a tracker tracking device or something. I hear you. Yeah, and, and that's why I don't do like. That's why I don't do what you do, bro. You know what I mean? I'm good at coming and talking to them and everything, but being there the whole time and being a full time teacher and everything. Yeah. No, I found that it's it's better that I don't do that. <laughs> you'll be like the uncle. You'll come visit. You'll have fun. You'll inspire them, and they'll bounce and leave them with me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a great way of describing it, right there, man. Looking forward to it. And I still want to hit you up about uh your 
Anam. I know your lady uh, still works for them, basically, right? Or, or uh, Nam? No, that's yeah. that's the job that I quit after ten years to become a teacher. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess. Well, I know your lady's a musician, so I, I always remember that. And uh, you know, King Create, man. It, it's uh, we miss your lady too, man. Val, she's been on the podcast, and uh, right, you, you yeah. know, she's the best. Her. She's the best. Oh, she there? Hey, yeah. Easy now, James. Keep her name out your mouth, dude. I mean, watch it. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you guys doing? Hey, awesome. Oh, I hear that beautiful voice. I hear that beautiful voice. <laughs> that's for I sure. The limo. <laughs> she, we, we both have the stress limo. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Hey. There she is. Woo. Oh, there she is. How beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so staying nice, sweetie. Oh, yeah. How you guys, how you guys so, doing? You being the stress limo. <laughs> much better now, I tell you. After having a session with two of my favorite guys in the world, um, I just I had smiles like when I first got on the <laughs> on the um, on the meeting today. James is looking at me and I was just like, <laughs> just big old grin, you know. I'm ready to go. I'm here early. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, always good connecting with you guys. So so again, guys, this awesome thing. We'll, 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 we won't keep uh, King Create to uh, away me about too long. Okay, so uh, you know for the audience, uh, follow King Create at king underscore create follow snyder at uh, snyder art on instagram and uh, reach out to them and uh hope you guys enjoyed this episode guys and uh, thank you to the audience for hanging out with us love you guys take care and peace thanks again guys thanks so much later guys Hey, what's up? It's James. And teacher. We just want to tell you a few ways that you can support us. Financially. That's right. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash PTTP show. Inside the Patreon, you can find a few different packages. You got everything from like a dollar all the way up to $5,000. You know, like if you're business, you want to do some advertising, you want to be a guest on the show or something like that. But you know what? We appreciate any way you guys would like to support us. This is just another way of doing it. Or access the shop at lastreart.gallery. Check out the shop as I'm a teacher's original artwork, some stickers, and also other merch coming at you from some of the guests on our show. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace.